Hello everyone. How are you guys doing? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good night. Wherever you guys are in the world. I'm uh, really happy to be here, Aryan. How are you, my friend? Welcome. Welcome, welcome. I'm just finishing some setup right here. John Doe. Hey, Abraham. I'm new to your channel and I'm loving it. Uh, that's great, man. Where are you from? I'm collecting students from all over the world. So you might be, um, what's the word? You might be from a country that we haven't mentioned yet. And if you haven't, I'll scratch the country from our map that we have over here. Cabercon. Hi. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. Good morning. Let me just finish up setting up some stuff over here. And uh, we'll get to it. Today we're going to do a, a like an extra chapter for our newest course, which is the sci-fi character creation. I, I've been having this idea of adding wings to the character. So I want to see if, uh, if it works. Zach, hi. Hello, my friend. India. Excellent, John. Excellent. Got a lot of students from India. Suresh, good morning. Is it? Um, I, I did some research, and so you guys are gonna tell me the guys from, that are from India. Is it okay to say uh, Namaste as a, as a greeting, or is that um, not like used normally? Hello, Eshu. YC68 says, hello, just recently bought up one of your courses, been loving how detailed they are. Keep up the great work. Thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Let me just change the code right here because we are having a sale. For those of you that are not aware, um, we just released our newest course and uh, we're having our sale for the newest course. Whenever we release a course, it's always on sale for the first couple of days. And, um, and then we... We usually have sales for the whole library, but right now we're combining both of them. So all of the courses are on sale. There we go. Namaste. Namaste. Nice. Yeah, I was doing some research and said it was like a like a normal greeting over there. I really like the meaning of it. It was like a very, very profound uh, like a greeting. Cool. So this is the character, my friends. If you haven't seen her, her name is Saria. Uh, the story is that she was the leader of a resistance, right, on the um, on the outer space. Um, my favorite, like space structure. It's pretty obvious, but it's the Pillars of Creation. They released this picture very recently from the from the James Webb Telescope. So um, I, I'm not like a huge uh, like space nerd, but there are certain things about space that I really love. And I remember seeing the Pillars of Creation a couple of years ago, and it's just like, I don't know, I don't know what it is. It kind of looks like a hand reaching out. It's really, really cool. And recently they released this photo, which is the, the newest version or the most updated version of the, of the Pillars. It looks really cool. Unfortunately, I read that the Pillars are not no longer there because there was a supernova a couple of, uh, like, a million years ago. And we're seeing the Pillars, of course, how they were millions of years ago. But the supernova is going to just erase them through it. Slushy, really happy you're doing character courses too. You make it so easy to digest and follow. Much love. Thank you. Thank you. Google just did some AI. What is it? Google AI announcement. Oh, in this thing, right? Yeah, I was. Oh, I saw something about it. Did see something about it. I haven't really checked what they did, but I, I I've been talk, talking about AI for the last couple of months. At first, I was a little bit hesitant about what the AI could offer, but now I'm really on board. To be honest, it's a really really cool tool if we know how to use it. We just need to be responsible and um, and try to to not affect anyone that's not um, that's not there. Tushar says, uh, "You see hands, I see wolves. Wolves, pair like a like a like. Okay, yeah, I can I, I can see it. I can see it. I can see the wolves. 
yeah adobe adobe announced something that looks really cool adobe firefly so this thing that adobe announced i thought was really 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 freaking cool which is it's the it's the same like ai generation tool right like uh, like mid journey and stuff like that but one thing that i saw that was like damn this is going to be really good for us as 3d artists there was this thing that um like this thing right here this is just amazing that you can just drag and drop like different styles and stuff um but no there was one that was like oh this is really cool where they created a very low poly mesh of like a castle or something inside of like blender or whatever and then they use ai to transform that into a concept piece so that sort of stuff it's gonna really really bring the creativity like forward so so yeah i think we're gonna have really cool tools in the next couple of months and years for us to play uh let's see parash says after completing complete guide to series 2022 course can i start with sci-fi character creation volume one course or stylized character sculpting in seabrush course yeah, you can start with either of them. Um, the character creation course is like is the newest one, so you, it might have a little bit more fresh information. Um, and it's a it's a really good one because we do go over anatomy. So the first, I think it's the first chapter or the second chapter, we go over the whole like anatomy creation for for the character. And after we finish with the anatomy, we start doing all of the armor pieces, all of the little details, all of the like seams and stuff. And then we jump into the into the armor. So. One of the things that I liked about this character is that I built this character in a modular way. So, so we talk about we talk a lot about how how we can create this character in a way that's gonna make her very very easy to animate, to rig, to prepare for games. So all of the armor pieces can be like easily like separated. For instance, this one right here, it's actually made out of um, of two pieces, like the front and the back. And my idea for the animation is that she's going to be in uh, what I call the exploration mode, similar to, to Samus's uh, serial suit. And then when she uh, goes into combat or when she needs to, to destroy things, she goes into combat mode and the armor just like shh, appears and just like assembles on her. So that's uh, following that reasoning. I, I did a lot of changes to the design of the character to make sure that um, that every single piece is modular and that we can take it uh, in or out to, to make the whole transformation possible. But yesterday I was thinking about like, hey, what could we add to this character? And I thought, what about wings? Uh, she already has a booster pack over here. Like this is a jetpack, um, jetpack backpack. But I thought a, a, a mechanical wings might look interesting. I've been playing a lot of, uh, of um, Xenoblade Chronicles. Well, not a lot, but I just got the newest uh, expansion pack and uh, it has this sort of like aesthetic right like a lot of like sci-fi sort of like wings so I, I thought something like this could look interesting what do you guys think should we add some wings to the character so she says how how much one should focus on anatomy when you're starting characters as beginners i would say as a beginner it's really important to start with anatomy because anatomy is going to build the foundation to um, to everything that you do. How was your day? Well, my day is just starting, Icy Film, but yesterday was a good day. It was uh, Mother's Day. I think it's Mother's Day everywhere, right? Like in, in all the world. I'm not sure if it's in all of the world, but here in Mexico, May 10th, is the it's Mother's Day. So we celebrated my wife and my mom. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Suresh says, I'm following your advanced character modeling course current at Fur Modeling. The asset you gave is not working because it's a higher version. I have 2020.2. Uh, oh, okay. Suresh, please, if you are on the Discord, send me a message on the Discord channel, like a direct message, and I will get you the asset in FBX format so that you can uh, work with it, okay? Uh, Tushar says, did you sculpt it in post or you use T-Post later? I sculpted... Uh, in in T pose or in A pose, and then I added the uh, the pose later for the for the renders. But the next course, Volume Two, where we go over um, what's the word? Where we'll, we will go over uh, retopology and stuff. It will go in. It will be in A pose. Okay. So if we take a look at the wing, the wing anatomy. Someone asked about wings uh, when I did the feather tutorial as well. The wings are really interesting because they're actually like arms. If we compare wings to arms, they are, they're pretty much like arms if, if you do something like this with the fingers. So you can see here that uh, birds have like a humerus, which is this thing right here. And then they have their forearm, like arms, which would be this ones right here. 
and then these are the metacarpals and these are the phalanxes or phalanges which are like the fingers and then from those like positions that they have like this all of the wings like start like moving forward so as you can see there are layers of wings and i actually saw recently a cosplayer that was doing some um some wings for their cosplay and uh, the way she built the wings was very very cool so so we're gonna have a little similar pattern now what i'm gonna do here i think i'm gonna use this uh, i'm not sure i'm trying to find a good diagram i think we're gonna use this one right here so, copy or save image i'm gonna save this on the uh folder so, project let's go source images so i'm gonna go to my um and uh, this character is actually on the center of the grid, I think, or at least like pretty center to the grid. I did rotate her a little bit, if I'm not mistaken. And I would like bring her back. There we go. And then this character over here. There we go. I'm gonna hide it. I'm actually gonna grab my whole like light setup. I'm gonna group it. And I'm gonna hide that one as well so that we can work on the character. There we go. Let's go to the group again. There we go. So we're gonna try to keep her as straight as possible so that when we like create the proportions for the wings and everything, they look uh, nice. Let's um, select this one right here. Hit open. Oh, there we go. So, so this is why uh, image planes and, uh, and proportions are so important. Before we start doing anything, before we start modeling or we start creating whatever we're going to be doing, we need to define how big we want the wings to be. Do we want to be like super intense, like big, like thin wings like this? Or do we want them to be like really small wings, kind of like, a, I don't know, like a Kirvins, Kirvins, I think they're called, the little angels from Valentine's Day? Or do we want like more traditional wings? I think something like this looks really, really cool. I'm going to go to the back side because I, I, I'm always thinking for this character, I'm always thinking about the gameplay. Like if we're going to be on a gameplay and she's going to be flying, I don't want the wings to be occupying every single part of the character. So I think something like this works really, really, really nice. Do you guys agree? Should this be the size? Yeah, Suresh, of course, Mercy from Overwatch is a perfect, um, it's a perfect, um, perfect example of how we can do wings i do believe hers are a little bit too simple like they have very few feathers i would like to add a couple more to mine but i really like the sort of like mechanical attributes on the top and then the energy beams going into the into the wings so that's something that we're definitely going to be doing for ours but i do want to change the um the way this works uh, uh, slightly henry mac i love you too my friend thank you for the support Thanks, Suresh. Yeah, just uh, Andy. Hello, uh, Suresh. Send me a message on Discord. Let me know. Like, give, send me a picture of the asset that you're having issues with, and uh, I'll open the project after the stream, and I'll send you the the updated effect. Um, okay. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is a technique that I really, really like using, which is a blocking. We actually used this one on the lion, um, the lion mechanical, uh, like uh, lion mechanical. Art surface. I always forget about the names. Mechanical creature creation. Mechanical creature creation. Um, which is a blocking. So I'm gonna go to mesh tools and I'm gonna use my create polygon tool, and we're gonna start with a very simple like polygon right there. That's gonna be like the basis of the um, of the whole thing, right? Like, let me hide the character just a second. There we go. So this is gonna be the basics of the whole thing, and then on top of this thing or creating a sort of actually let me let me go back Let's hide this girl i'm gonna go uh ba -ba -ba, create polygon tool i'm gonna create a couple of bevels already there we go something like that and then we're gonna press g and on top of this we're gonna have a different sort of uh like hard surface thing there we go that and then on top of this thing we're gonna have another hard surface thing and then on top of this we're gonna have another hard surface thing like that 
And as you can see, this creates like the base skeleton of our wings. Now, I, I do want to keep it a little bit more stylized. And you can see Mercy, she does have, no, actually, she does have all of the elements. So let's keep it like this for now. Now, I'm going to grab all of these blocks. I'm going to press Control E and we're going to extrude them forward to create the, the general thickness of how how the, the wings are going to be. So something, I think something like that. Now, of course, uh, we're going to center the pivot point for all of these guys. And then we're going to start creating a little bit of overlap. Overlap is super, super important because overlap allows us to create shapes, create volume, create the depth in our character. And depth is super, super important for, for this sort of elements because they're going to allow us to, um, to generate a nice interaction overall. Okay, let's do that here. A little bit thicker on the base. So that's going to be the basic shape. Now, if we bring our character back, we should be able to see. Let's push this back. These are going to be floating wings. Like we're going with sci-fi, like a magic sci-fi store stuff. So, so it's going to be very fantastical in this kind of case. And um, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll do this. Uh, Andy is saying, thinking about buying the new course, how much anatomy of the female body face uh, is there on the new course? Quite a bit. Um, let me show you real quick. If you check uh, Udemy, whenever you're looking for a course, you can check the... You can check the chapters over here. So in the introduction, um, and, or introduction and the expiration suit, although this first two chapters, so it's one hour and a half and then four and a half hours. So that's like, what, seven hours? It's all anatomy, all, all anatomy, because we are only doing like the, the body armor. And then we do all of the hard surface armor, armor setup, leg armor, arm armor, jetpack armor, props and weapons. And then we have a full chapter for the head. It's not, the head is not as detailed as like Victor Yamakado's uh, course, the one with Anthony Hopkins. So if you want to go a little bit deeper into like face anatomy, that one from Victor Yamakado is really good. You can use the code right here to, to get that one as well. Um, but we, we do go over everything. I mean, this course is 21 hours long, so it's, uh, it's really, really extensive. It's only the high poly though. We're only focusing on the high poly on this course. Volume two will focus on retopology and textures. And then volume three, I want to do animation as well. So yeah. Okay. This is it. Now we need to think about this part right here in Mercy's, uh, wings. You can see that they they figured this out by creating some attachments on the on the center so there's a lot of like mechanical stuff and then from that mechanical stuff we get the wings i i kind of like that uh like process so i first want to create the energy uh wings i'm gonna create i'm gonna go mesh tools create polygon again i know i definitely want to have this sort of like like that Maybe, maybe a little bit less, like a little bit thinner. Reverse. So I'm gonna grab this edge, just make it a little bit thinner. There we go. And then we're gonna duplicate this and start creating the rest of the of the wings. So I'm gonna do from for this orange thing. I think I'm gonna do four. Personally, whenever I, I need to decide how many of any element I need to have, I like to try to use like math to, to figure that out. And uh, usually prime numbers and even numbers are really like nice to work with. So for instance, here, I'm going to use four, which is an even number. But I do want to change the shape here a little bit of the element to create a design. Her design is very angular, as you can see right here. So I kind of want the, the same thing to happen right here. For instance, this one, I'm going to flatten it out. To make it really angular. And then this one, you can do something like this. And as you can see, we, we created an, an angle right here on the grid that looks interesting. And then we can fill all of this in with some more mechanical stuff. I actually think this one is a little bit too much so uh, i'm not sure i think it's this thing right here push this thing up 
There we go. That looks good. Interesting. Okay, so that, those would be like the four, the four big ones, which is like this um, um, orange one. And then we're going to need some more on the blue ones. For the blue ones, I'm actually going to use five. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five. Let's turn her off for just a second again so we can. So I like five. Now we, of course, need to clean up the shapes a little bit because right now they're looking way too weird, especially the, the connections here on the top. I wanna, I wanna curve them out and create a nice angular transition. And, and this is the, the cool part about this process or one of the parts that I like about the creative process where you can like play around and, uh, and find and see what works and what doesn't. Uh, most of the time when I'm doing the, the tutorials, I can't do this because uh, I, I need to make them very like precise and I need to make no mistakes to, to teach you guys everything. But this is what goes a lot uh, around or um, behind the scenes. We, we go through a lot of this sort of like iteration process and, and figure out what works and what doesn't. Oh, what was that? Screen error. Can we download the videos or do we need to be on the whole website? I'm not sure actually. I think if you buy them from ArtStation, you can download them. It's a lot of gigabytes. It's like 10 gigabytes, I think, of videos, or like 15 gigabytes. It's uh, because it's 24 hours of content. I think from ArtStation, you can download them. I think you, Demi, you need to stream them, but I'm not sure if you can download them. You might want to check that with uh, with the site. Um, it says, you said you were going to render the Sapphire character in UE5 in volume two course, so we can... No, I, I, actually, I actually render it in both. On, on volume one, I render it in both. So I show you how to do the rendering inside of Arnold, and I also show you how to do a simple render here inside of uh, Unreal. Let me open it real quick. Uh, thanks for the info, man. Currently making a female character, and it will be good to see how the Master Abraham does it. There you go, man. Yeah, I've done two female characters. Uh, one of this is this one, Saria, uh, which is a little bit more like heavy oriented or heavy game oriented. And then I did uh, Gavala, which is the 3D printing. Where is she? Oh, she's over here on the on the 3D printer. So this one over here, that was the the female we did for the 3D printing course. Uh, but yeah, we're we're gonna bring this character eventually into Unreal. Okay, so we got all of these wings right here, which are looking interesting. But now we need to decide whether we want all of this vertex to go all the way to the um, to the wing, or do we want them to go to the, um, or do are we gonna add something in, like? New with like mercy right like this sort of like armor bits i think armor bits look good but let's let's look for more inspiration sci-fi wings it's always good to to reference more stuff because if we only use one specific version we're gonna be like um only influenced by that specific version and then we're not gonna be able to to create or imagine new things here's where i think ai is is a good tool like if we use ai to generate some ideas and, and get our brains going as long as we're not stealing from anyone i think it's not a bad tool to, to use. okay um here we go this is the same like clay render here but this is inside of uh, unreal engine Again, very basic HDRI, a couple of lights here. We're using Nanite to, to see the whole like armor and stuff. And thanks to Lumen, which is the new uh, thing that we have here instead of uh, Unreal, we can get a really, really clean render in real time. So so we do cover this on the on the course as well, on volume, on volume one. What software do you think is the best for rendering? That's a great question. So I would say, Oh, that's a great question. I personally render, I would say like 80% of my stuff with uh, Arnold and then another 10% with Marmoset and the other 10% with Unreal. So all of those three are the ones that I use. I, I don't think there's one that's better than the others. Like each has a specific like function or purpose. 
So knowing most of them is, is a good thing because you can like do renders very quickly. But I've been using Arnold a lot for the past like years because it's um, it has like, the noise and stuff like that. So it makes for a very, very practical way to create and modify things. Let's keep these things a little bit thickness. I'm gonna extrude them. There we go. And let me bring them back. That they're where they're gonna be or where they're supposed to be, which is roughly about there. Let's bring the character back in and see how that looks. So I think it looks a little bit disorganized, to be honest. I'm gonna grab the image and I'm gonna bring the alpha gain to something like 0.1. We don't see this much. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit disorganized. So we need to clean up the, the shape here on the wings. And if we take a look again at some reference. I'm seeing the one like constant thing about the wings is that they they're kind of like hidden. Where are they? Like this guy right here, they all they all kind of go to the to the base of the element. So they all kind of like stick to the base of the element. So let's do that. Sticking to the base. And then we'll figure out what we'll do. Let's up. Let's hide the character for just a second. Now here we do need to, to think a little bit about to which specific part of the wing they're gonna be like uh, attached. Because if that part moves from a rigging perspective, everything else is gonna move as well. I'm actually going to be doing a, a quick rigging like uh, exercise in just a second to, to see if this works. I'm also going to change the... Like, there's an invisible... Whenever you have an object, talking about silhouette, this is a, a, a very... It's, well, yeah, I think this is a very advanced design thing. Um, it took me a while to understand, so hopefully it's not hard for me to explain and you guys can, um, can grasp the concept as well. But every time we have an object, there's an invisible object within that object and the invisible object is made out by the silhouette of the original object so so all of this empty space like all of the these things where our our wings are pointing this area right here it's creating an invisible object and if we make sure that that invisible object looks good then we're gonna be able to, to generate a, a thing or a design that's more appealing so what i'm doing here is i'm trying to line up the vertices of this thing in such a way that that invisible object makes sense and we create a, a graphic shape you can see it right here we create a graphic shape that follows the character in a nice in a nice way so for instance this points right here i'm gonna just move them a little bit so that so that we can have this invisible line like pointing to the next uh angle and and uh, again as i'm telling you it is a little bit more of an advanced concept but if you can grasp it and apply it to your designs your designs are going to be so much more intense. We use this quite a bit in the in like gesture drawing. Okay, so that this this thing I think I think is good. I, I like this thing. I, I really like this four runs right here. This look a little bit too straight. That's kind of like the way they go over here. I want to move down a little bit. Let's try a very quick rig, okay? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna move the pivot points of these things to where I would expect them to rotate from. For instance, this guy, I'm gonna press D. I'm gonna rotate this here. Then this guy, I'm gonna press D and I'm gonna rotate right there. And then all of these wings, I'm gonna parent them to their, like to the shape that they're gonna be like moving from. And then I'm going to parent each of these shapes to the shape before it. Like this. So now if I move the wing, everything moves. But here's the here's the kicker. If I grab all of these guys and I rotate them. See that? So that's the that's the movement or the rig of the of the wing. This is how we would expect the, the wing to, to move. We could get a very cool idea 
of how how the movement in game would be as long as we follow the the proper uh, the proper rigging process. So now, if we bring the character back again, and we select the elements here, we can get an idea of how it's gonna look. And if it looks good, then I think we're fine. For instance, that the lowest that the wings gonna go is probably gonna be like right around there. And uh, as long as there's not a lot of overlap, I think we're fine. So, so yeah, I think uh, I think this is working. We would definitely need to modify some of this a little bit more. So I'm gonna go back to to the beginning here. Let's let's move the pivot points of these things. Their center point. So that when we uh, rotate everything, we can still rotate them a little bit. But I think I think that's uh, that's how we're gonna do it. How am I parenting? I'm just selecting one and then selecting the other and hitting the letter P, P to parent. What is the shortcut to hide the selected objects? H, the letter H. Um, when am I planning to continue the lights next week? Because this week we have a portfolio review. So I th I'm thinking about doing a live portfolio review tomorrow. We're going to have a, a, another live and we'll just be doing the portfolio review. And then we're going to have a recorded portfolio review for uh, Saturday and maybe for Sunday because there's a lot of submissions this month. So we're going to go through all of those um, elements. Mm, give me just one second. One second. I'll, I'll, share, I'll share the Discord link as well. One second, one second. Sorry. Uh. My, my mom is going into a, um, a surgery. She's going to go into surgery. It's a small one. It's not, it's not risky or anything, but, uh, they were just telling us that she's, she's about to go into the, into the operation room. Uh, okay. So b -b 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 what's up, man? I'm Brandon Singh. So there we go. Um, now what I was saying is we are going to do this thing right here and we need to make sure that when we do this movement, this guy's right here create a very, very clean, very clean curvature. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use the, the new pose of the wings to modify the rotation of these things. And hopefully when we bring this rotation back, we'll get the actual like uh the actual like distribution that we want. Look at that, that's a beautiful distribution. Looks really, really cool. Now we can bring this guys and bring them back. There will be a little bit of overlap, so, so we gotta be very careful. And I think this right here is gonna be the base uh, pose for our wings. Because there is there is a little bit of overlap, but it's not too much. I'm actually gonna move a couple of things around. And that little like parenting trick that we did, this like posing thing that we did, is gonna allow us to find the base forms that we wanna have. I uh, didn't notice one second. Is this long, sir? What do you mean one second? I'm not sure what you mean. I see. There you go. So now we can move this up and down. Of course, we can like if we're talking about a rig, each wing would have a, its own joint so that when we do this thing right here, we don't get this like super horrible overlap. Uh, but yeah, this is looking good. Now let's figure out what are we going to do with like this section right here? Because I do want the, the wings to be following this direction. I'm going to turn on actually uh, ambient pollution. So I want the wings to go this direction. But I don't want them to just like get like uh, do something like that. Arian says, can't you check the art support and Nexus folder? Let's take a look real quick. So for those of you that are unaware, we have something called the art support Nexus. 
So if you guys have a question about the model or something that you're working on, um, you can submit it here. We have one from Aryan, and I think we've already, yeah, I've already taken care of this one from Shashank. So let's see. Aryan says, what is the material on this chair? Uh, that's kind of like a velvet material. It's like, uh, in Spanish, we call it gamusa. Let me see if... Um, Chamois. Chamois. It's a, it's a leather. So let's see here. If we look for leather. You might find something like close to that. It's like a very, very rough leather. Like this worn gold leather. worn deer leather probably something like that it's like a really rough leather because you have a lot of like fresnel on it so i will probably look for something like that my friend again in 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 spanish it's called gamusa in english it says it's called chamois Let's see if, uh, if we get the actual yeah so it's this sort of like velvety um thing I think that's what you I think that's what you want for for this particular chair. Ah. <laughs> no, don't worry, AC film. Don't worry. That's fine. I I I didn't catch the joke. That's the thing, but uh now I understand. Okay. So, uh now we need to again, as I was say saying, we need to figure out what else are we going to add on the wings, right? Like um I really like this, like, butterfly wings. As you can see, we have some, like, extra mechanical things there. This one looks really cool. Energy wings. I think, like, there is a pattern that we use quite a bit on her. And that's the, the shoulder path uh, pattern. Which is, like, this sort of, like, very triangular-looking thing. So, I think something like that might work. I'm going to go to the front view again. And I'm going to go to mesh. Sorry, mesh tools, create polygon. Or we're gonna create a polygon like this. There we go. And then we're gonna use this shape, create like the. This is the place where the energy, like all of this energy beams, are gonna be like being generated from. So, front view, let's make this a little bit bigger. And we can create, here's where, uh, this is a, a concept I use all the time. You guys have heard, have heard me use it before. It's called complexity out of a simplicity, right? So we have a very simple shape in this uh, angle. And then we just like modify it and move it around and create something that looks a little bit more complex by creating this sort of like overlaps and um, elements and uh, just like general things. For instance, something like this, right? See how so we create this very geometric, cool geometric patterns and uh, and effects everywhere. That's the that's the kind of stuff that uh, that we're going for. And then what I'm gonna do in just a second is I'm gonna play with something else, which is the overlaps. So right now we have all of this like elements right here. I'm gonna select all of them. Control E, give them a little bit of volume. Not too much, it should be more than the wings, but less than the, what's the word? Less than the, um, like the core of the wing. And then we're gonna move them inside of the wings. There we go. Parenting is different than combining. Yes, parenting is super different than combining. Here's the, here's the main like difference. When you combine two objects, like if you have two objects and you say uh, mesh combine, they are now one and the same, right? So if we rotate them and the pivot is on the center, you can see that this rotates kind of like two eyeballs, right? Like imagine like a little monster cartoon or something. These are like two eyeballs that we're seeing uh, or that we're using to see each other. When you parent this or the second element that you select becomes the sun of the first element. So where this goes, the sun goes. Looks very similar, but when you rotate, 
as you can see, the rotation happens from the point of the parent. So this is very important because when you have multiple objects parented in a chain, which is what I just did there, like this is, uh, or this is the parent of this one, this is the parent of this one, and this is the parent of this one, but they are all connected, right? So we have this little like chain of, of elements. And if you rotate the first one, we get this. If you rotate the second one, we get it. But if you select all of them and you rotate them, as you can see, we get this sort of like chain effect where you're getting like double rotations and stuff. I covered this quite a bit in my um, introduction to rigging for Maya. And, and this is a very, very important principle of that course that allows us to, to generate that sort of effects. Now, what we're gonna do here is I'm actually gonna grab some of the, of the like plates that we have right here. I'm gonna make them smaller or thinner than the other ones. So what this will generate or what this will create is again, it's gonna create like depth and perspective on the whole thing. And as you can see, our whole element starts looking way, way, way more, uh, more interesting. So not bad, right? Not bad for a little bit of time that we've been doing this. Second. There we go. So now that we have this, we can start thinking about uh, doing a little bit of uh, uh, modeling to, to clean some shapes. We're not going to be able to finish this in, in this live stream, but uh, at least we can get something started. And uh, hopefully this inspires you guys if you're getting the new course to, to do something similar. Let's see, some questions first. Uh, chat says, uh, Suresh, it's like joining in Blender. I didn't know parenting exists in Maya and have some issues. No, it's not like joining. When you join in Blender, you, you're actually combining the objects as well. So Blender has something similar. Let me show you. So when you have two objects right here and you press control J, they're now the same object. So this is, this is like combining, right? If you have multiple objects, I believe the shortcut was letter P shift P. Who was it? There we go. It's control P. So you set the parent to object and now one of these objects is going to be the parent of the other. So as you can see here in the, in the hierarchy, inside of this cube 001, we have this cube 002, okay? So this cube is a, a son or it's parented to this one right here, but they're separate entities. So I can modify them or move them in a separate way. But as you can see, there's like a, like a nice invisible line right there, like a dotted line, because there is a connection on the, on the options. So if I rotate this guy, as you can see, the other cube follows around. And then you also have something like a group, right? Or a collection where you can group all of the objects. In Maya, you can do it as well with control G and that's just gonna group them together. But what happens, and that's the funny thing, when you're in Maya and you and you have multiple objects and you group them, what you're technically doing is you're creating a group and then you're parenting all of the spheres to that specific group. I know it's under my image right now, but that's what you do when you parent. You you select objects and they are now uh, parented to a group that controls all of the things that happen to those objects. So let's go, for instance, with this piece right here. Uh, actually, I'm going to go to all of the pieces. I'm going to press Shift P to remove the parenting of all of the pieces uh, so that we can work on them individually. Let's work on this one right here. And I'm going to show you guys a very cool trick. So the first thing some of you might be uh, picturing on this guy is that we have angons, right? Like this piece right here and this piece right here are angons. And usually we do want to clean angons. So easiest way to clean an angon is to just grab a point like this one right here and connect it to the point on the other side so that we don't have any angons anymore. So this has now become a, a normal uh, like mesh. And I'm going to delete this uh, faces right here to give this thing uh, thickness. And then I'm going to use a bevel on this upper corner right here. So we're going to have something like this. Okay. Now that we have this, we can do control E and I'm going to do a thickness in to create like the, like the actual a mesh. 
and then I'm gonna say uh, mesh display and reverse to create like the this is like the whole of the of the wing right as you can see this is already looking a little bit more interesting it's looking more like a like a sci-fi mesh than uh, what we had before that doesn't mean that we're finished though we can still add more stuff so for instance i think and this is again where we can use the complexity out of simplicity approach it's like how can we make this thing look a little bit more interesting without actually working too much and that is i'm gonna select this faces right here the outer faces i'm gonna say mesh edit mesh i'm gonna duplicate them so now we have this thing right here and this thing right here and on this one right here i'm gonna go to my my front view and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna move the vertex using object more well, actually it doesn't really matter i'm gonna move the vertex like up here this guy like right around here move this guys to like there and this one right there and as you can see you can just extrude this thing out not too much right just a little bit and that's pretty much creating an extra plating an extra armor plating on the whole thing which makes it look really cool right like all just by doing this very simple like thing we've already created a little bit more visual interest to this uh to this whole piece um other things that we could do i mean we can repeat this just uh, duplicate this guy center the third point be like hey you know what like i want another like small one right here and it's just about moving the vertex because we already have pretty much the same shape as the as the original element right so again talking about like the the invisible shapes or the invisible figures i'm gonna try to to capture this right here and we get something like this i i don't think this extra one is necessary then with this one you get a very nice effect i'm gonna show you another trick i use this trick to um what's the word i use this trick in the in the mechanical creature course to create the seam lines or section lines so i'm gonna add a line right here and a line right here and as you can see now, these faces have created a little like thing that we can use. Well, let me go back a little bit because we, we did need to add this on let's say 80% there. There we go. So I'm gonna grab these edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. There we go. And all of those I'm gonna bevel small fraction and then with that bevel created we can just extrude this in with a little bit of offset of course and as you can see that's going to create a very interesting section line as well we can still go to the front view and if we want to like make this a little bit more angular we can just some, remove some of these vertices to create a, a slightly different approach or, or effect right there now we can do this or we can use this tricks because this is the high poly and um when we do the bakes all of this high poly things that we're doing are going to be baked down into a low poly which is going to be the game ready asset uh let's see Paras says do i need to have a good grip of an enemy before studying sci-fi character creation volume one course or stylized get not you don't need to have a perfect grip of an enemy but if you know the basics of it it's going to be really helpful now i do go over the um, uh the general stuff in the on the course so you will be able to to follow along if um as long as you know seabrush all of the principles from an enemy we do cover them on the course i'm gonna bevel the whole corner here the outer corner and there we go and as you can see this starts creating a complexity on our wings and this is what we're going to be doing to pretty much like create the the remaining things May I ask how to bevel? Yeah, of course. So whenever you have uh, an edge, this is a super, super helpful trick to doing like cut lines in things that are like not flat. So like this guy right here, if you select an, an edge loop or you close a, a loop, even if it doesn't flow perfectly with topology and you bevel that loop, the bevel will create a new, um, a new division as you can see right here. And then you just select that edge uh, or the, the edge loop that you created there and you extrude the set. That's that's all you need to do. So just bring this in and, uh, and now we create this sort of like section line. That's one way to do it. I'm gonna show you guys one more way, which is really, really cool. First, let me check some of the messages because I've been, uh, I've been uh, getting this. Um, 
So, the other thing that I want to show you was how to do a section line that's a little bit more aggressive. It's a, it's a slightly different uh, approach here. Now, one thing that we can use, and again, this is only possible to do with um, with high polys, when we're preparing the high polys for our characters. But one of the other things that we can do is we can use booleans. So, I'm going to delete the history on this guy. I'm going to create a new cube. And I want to boolean out like the corners here so we can get this guy right here and do one a minus b there we go so you can see we're going to be able to get a really clean cut right there this kind of cuts is the kind of cuts that it's not uh, as easy to do with um with traditional modeling because as you can see the flow of topology doesn't allow for it if you want to clean the topology, again, it's not necessary because this is the high poly and at the end we can just triangulate everything, but this is a fairly simple one. Just need to go from here to here and that pretty much solves our, our issues. Look at how nice and clean that looks now. Right? Now, here's the, the other section line trick that I want to show you. I'm going to do a section line going across the, the wing. So, Oh, wait. Is this, oh, this is an angle as well. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. So I'm going to use my cut brush. I'm going to cut straight ahead like that. And then what we can do is select this new edge that I just created. And I'm going to say edit the mesh, detach. So now what happens is this front part of the wing is a different piece than this back part of the wing. If I select this part of the wing, I can grab this guys, extrude in, and create this sort of like beveled effect and then I need to do the exact same thing on the other part so I'm gonna grab this guy right here grab this guys and extrude this in like this and then here's where the, where the magic happens I'm gonna grab this edge and bevel it and this edge and bevel it and as you create, we create, as you can see, we can create a very nice section line that follows the shape of the element. And again, it only works for the high poly. It can also work on a, on a, on a subdivision approach, but it works really, really nice to, to create this, this softer, um, or in this case, like a softer section line for the whole thing. So yeah, that's it. This is how I would approach modeling this wing, my friends. What do you think? Do you like it so far? Okay, let's answer some questions, my friends. If you guys have questions, now's the time. So we're about to wrap this uh, this uh, live stream right now, and um, and we're gonna prepare for portfolio review tomorrow. We're gonna have a live stream tomorrow, and we're gonna be doing portfolio review. Okay, um, I'm gonna save this scene. Let's see if this is wings. It's a heavy scene, almost like one and a half gigabytes because of all of the high polys that we have. Ideally, I would probably work on this on a separate scene to, to keep it light. Now, if you guys want to learn 3D, if this is the first time you're watching the stream or you're watching this channel, we have a lot of free content here on YouTube, but we're also running this uh, May 2023 promotion. And, um, and you can use this code to get any of the courses. We've got over 65 courses for the um, elements or for, for all of these videos. Do you know of any AI retopology or heard of anything being developed like that? Not really. Uh, I, I haven't heard anything specific, but we do have C Remesher and we do have here instead of Maya, we got the um, the new thing, the retopologize option. These are automatic. So, I mean, technically you can consider them to be AI because it's the computer doing the whole thing. But um, but no, the problem with, with retopology is that we need very specific things and each model is slightly different. So, so that's why we need to usually do it by hand. 
there you go. Is Fusion 360 good for hard surface game assets? I actually have not used Fusion 360. I'm not sure. Let's see. It depends. If um, no, it's a CAD software. Okay, so so CAD softwares are a little bit different. CAD softwares are used for a, a different type of industry. They're usually used for the manufacturing industry. And the way they work is they utilize something that are not polygons. They use nerves or curves. So they're really good to do hard surface stuff. But if you want to get these things into a game, you're going to have to go through the retopology process. It's a good way to model. Like if you already know how to um, how to model with Fusion 360, then yeah, you can definitely create really cool things. But in order to transform these things into, into usable assets for games, you're going to have to go through the retopology process. And sometimes, at least in my experience, because we've gotten some CAD models uh, for some projects, it, it's just way easier to just redo it with polygons because trying to capture all of the curvatures with uh, polygons, it, it becomes really, really complex. So if someone handed for me like this to me, for instance, a lot of the things, instead of having to retopologize, uh, re I would just do them again. For instance, like all of the cylindrical stuff and things like that, I would just do them again in, inside of Maya. Uh, maybe these things that are a little bit more specific, I would retopologize. Uh, but unfortunately, NURBS are, are different. You're, you're talking about a different type of object. So it definitely takes a little bit more time to 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 convert it to something that's going to be usable for a game. What's up, Roma? Welcome. We're almost at the end, but um, but we're right here. We're answering some questions. Uh, is there a way to speed up retopology? Quadra takes forever. Yeah, uh, I mean, you can use Siri Measure. Siri Measure is perfectly fine, especially if you're doing an object that's not going to be deforming. So, for instance, if you're doing statues or like props or things like that, Siri Measure is fine. I mean, no one's going to know. Um, but it's not as efficient, right? Like if you want to be super efficient, like if you're doing games for, for a phone or things like that, you definitely need to um, to work a little bit more with that. So so yeah, I, I think I think Serum Measure is good. Even the, the new like retopologize thing for Maya is quite good as well. <laughs> yeah, we started at 9.30, my friend, but we'll have one more uh, stream tomorrow as well. We're going to be doing portfolio review. So if you guys want to be... Um, uh, online for that one uh, make sure to, to tune in as well and uh, we're also running the as I mentioned before we're running the the promo code over here the 90% discount or 80% it's, it's region dependent so depending on what region you are guys you might get slightly more or slightly less discount but it's the maximum discount that we can give on your region it's region specific let's see um, I sound like I'm from Chihuahua no I'm from um, originally I'm from Monterrey uh, the Monterrey pero ahorita estoy viviendo en Saltillo Ya llevo muchos años viviendo aquí en Saltillo. Where are you from, Sebastián? Yeah, it's looking not bad. I think, I think this is a nice, like generally. Yeah, let's should we do a quick render? I think we should do a quick render. Let's do a quick render just to get an idea of how this thing is gonna look. So uh, I'm gonna assign the M clay to everything, and then I'm gonna grab the wing blades and I'm gonna assign them the glass there we go I'm gonna grab everything here I'm gonna group it I'm gonna shift mirror this world X and negative and hit apply let's bring in our rendering setup panels let's just select it Here, okay. let's do a quick render to to finish the stream. I'm gonna say real quick before the render crashes. Uh Paras, tomorrow we're gonna be uh, streaming. Oh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. I just remember there's a, something I need to do. It's going to be either a little bit earlier, like 7 a.m., which is going to be like 6.30 p.m. India time, or it might be a little bit later, depending on, on the thing that I need to, to do first. Arnold, render. Let's see how this looks. Let's close some softwares to free up some memory. There you go. There we go. Not bad. I like the, the general look. Of course, the wings are not finished. But I like the 
the general look. I think from a silhouette standpoint, it looks really good. I think that the, the wings might be a little bit too high. So let's bring them a little bit lower. So I want the, the shoulder pads to, to really like shine. There we go. That's a lot better. Nice. Not bad. Not bad. So it definitely needs a lot more work if we want to add the wings. But maybe this could be like a like a DLC later on, right? Like an extra extra weapon that she finds in game and uh, and uses it to to go across like big areas or big surfaces. Cool. Oh yeah, F Spy script. Yeah, I, I Arturo Saldana. Yeah, I did the video about F Spy not too long ago as well. Uh, how to match cameras. Yes, yes. Tomorrow, May twelfth. That's right. That's right. Uh, Aryan, you're asking about the... Uh, art support nexus. Let me check real quick. Remember that we have also portfolio review available. So, if you guys want to... I would need to see a render, my friend, because I can see the, the maps, but I'm not seeing the, the textures. I would need to download it. We'll do that uh, tomorrow. Is that okay for the for the portfolio review? We'll check if it if it matches, Arya. So yeah, tomorrow, May 12th, we're gonna be back with more uh, with more 3D guys. We're gonna be going over portfolio review. If you want to submit your portfolios, you can do that on the link then in the description where it says portfolio review. Just drop a folder, drop a link, and I'll be happy to take a look and give you my advice. Uh, you can also do this in Discord. I'm going to be going through the Discord portfolios as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Don't forget that we have our sale going on right now. This character right here, Saria, she's from our newest course, the Sci-Fi Character Creation Volume 1. And uh, we also have all of our other courses ready. So if you're a beginner and you want to learn, we have the Complete Guide to Maya 2022. We got the uh, Complete Guide to Seabrush. Uh, Marmon said, Marvelous Designer. There's so many softwares out there. So if you want to learn them all, the courses that we offer are probably your best bet. So that, that's it, my friends. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll see you back tomorrow. Burke, sorry, my friend. I'm, I'm about to close the stream, but thank you for um, thank you for tuning in here at the, at the last part of the stream. I'll be back tomorrow with uh, Portfolio Review, as I was mentioning. And uh, that's it.